Ooh, test, 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 check. Are you guys ready? Okay, well, welcome very much today. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce our visiting scholar, Dr. Nestor Perez Mayada. Um, Nestor is a physical therapist trained in um, also a master's of law, health law and doctor in biomedicine uh, and health sciences. And during the past 12 years, he's combined teaching at university with clinical practice and research. Uh, in 2009, he joined the San Juan de Dios University of Nursing and Physical Therapy of the Pontifical University Comillas as the head of the physiotherapy studies. And at this university, he taught different subjects, um, but most recently, uh, he left this position to focus his professional development on research through biomechanics and tools specializing in teaching activities. He's the technical director of the Clinical Biomechanics and Physiotherapy Research Unit, and his main areas of interest are clinical biomechanics and physiotherapy, instrumental biomechanics, sports physiotherapy and functional evaluation. Nestor arrived here in Winnipeg June 8th and he will be here until mid-August. Um, his presentation today will focus on a downloadable app that we can use to measure neck, shoulder and knee biomechanics. He'll be using case studies and live demonstrations to do this. So I'll turn it over to Nestor and he can carry on. Thank you. Um, well, the first that uh, uh, I want to say is um, give the thank yous to Barbara uh, and to REC uh, by inviting me to be with uh, in this university. For me, it's an honor. Uh, can um, try to learn uh, what is the uh, form to, to work here. And <coughs> I'm going to speak about the my focus area that is about uh, biomechanics equipment. Uh, the first uh, things uh, is uh, uh, I'm going to tell the index uh, about the presentation. Uh, the first I want to speak about where I am uh, in Spain and uh, very short time. Um, after, we are going to download uh, three apps uh, to know the different uh, measurement that we can take with these apps. Uh, the, the name is Goniometro Advanced Kinematic Jam and Kinematic Gonio. And we are going to use this equipment to resolve uh, three case that we have uh, with Wii Plus injury, with uh, cruciate ligaments and uh, shoulder affections uh, during the presentation. Uh, we are in Madrid, in the center from Spain. Um, uh, this is picture from my laboratory with the student that we have in master in biomechanics and sport activity. Uh, this equipment is a dynamometer. Do you know what is a dynamometer? It's equipment that gives different valor about the strengths and in isometric, isotonic, and isocinetic movement. And we use this equipment to know the different uh, strain that we can, uh, we can find in, in, in the body. Uh, we have uh, another equipment that is a uh, 3D analysis. Uh, it's very usually uh, difficult to use. Um, both equipment are very, very expensive. Uh, we are speaking about the 100,000 euro, euros. Uh, to buy this equipment and the student, they are very happy to use this equipment, but when they finish the master, they told us that they have a problem to spend a lot of money with this equipment to use the measurement with the patient. For this reason, uh, we, uh, are going, uh, we are working in this moment to develop different apps that the student can use to take measurement with the patient a very easy and very cheaper uh, to evaluate the patient. Uh, this is a square from the center of Madrid, uh, Cibeles, and this is our school. Uh, it's a, a small uh, building that we are, uh, we was, we were in, in the center, from, in the south of Madrid, 
because uh, similar happened in University of uh, Manitoba. We have three campus, one in the north from Madrid, that they have healthy, uh, they have a healthy science uh, with a sport and teacher uh, in the center of Madrid, where they have uh, lawyer and uh, lawyer and engineering. Uh, in the south of Madrid, we have nursing and physical therapy. Uh, we have in our university 800 students, divided in four different schools, uh, more or less uh, 100 students per year in, in four schools. In Spain, uh, physical therapy uh, is a little bit different from here. Uh, we have, our students have to do four uh, years from bachelor, from degree, sorry, but it's specific for physical therapy during four years. When they finish, they have to make one master in physical therapy, and when they finish, they have to make three years to get the doctorate in physical therapy, okay? Um, now, it's, uh, in this university, we have a different uh, um, degree and uh, growing with the, to get the, the doctorate. Uh, we can see the different pictures about the same equipment, and here we have a, a cheaper device that we have um, to use with the student that is similar to the app that we are going to use today to get the different uh, measurements. Well, with this short presentation, we are going to speak about the different equipment that we can use. Um, why the reason to, to find lower cost and higher accurate with biomechanics equipment? Because the student, when they finish the master in biomechanics and sport activity, they need begin to take measurement with equipment very easy and very cheaper. Now, uh, uh, in the last five years, uh, we can find uh, different uh, mobiles that have very accurate equipment that we usually uh, uh, take to play or to uh, look for th uh, things uh, for internet. Now, uh, we are going to use this equipment, these apps, these tools that the phone have uh, to, to develop uh, measurement with the patient. There are another cheaper uh, tools uh, similar to accelerometer, dynamometer, or encoders, that the cost could be in 500 or 1,000 euros. But we think that we can use the apps to get good measurement with the patient. But uh, when we want to, to take one app, uh, it's very important that know are the advantages and disadvantages that the app have because uh, it's probably that we can find good advantage, similar to can take faster measurement, uh, it's easy to use with uh, PT or OT, as well as with patient, it's cheaper if we have a, a phone, or uh, accurate, and it's a good form to starting point for obtaining data and pilot study. Perfect, it's very nice, but uh, it's necessary that we know what tools take our phone, because our phones have four um, tools inside the telephone, very important. Accelerometer, gyroscopio, and magnetometer, okay? Three, yeah, three tools are inside the phones, and we, we can use to the video system, okay? Uh, if, uh, I, I told that it's accurate, but could be not accurate, depend, depend the app that we use. For example, we are going to use one app that take the data uh, inside the phone with accelerometer. But this, if the phone fall and break the accelerometer, I don't know if the equipment is correct or is not correct when I take the measurement, okay? Uh, but if I'm going to use the video system, uh, I am sure that when I take the data, this 
will be good because the video is difficult that the equipment break, okay? This is the principal question that we have to know when we don't loan uh, apps. What is the, uh, what is the uh, tools that the phone use to take the difference data, okay? Uh, the disadvantage is normally is few variables. If we compare the equipment free analysis with a phone, uh, we can find different uh, movement in a joint, but with the 3D analysis, we can find the difference with a lot of joints from the body, uh, similar to gait analysis. You can uh, obtain, you can get a lot of measurement, but the equipment is very expensive too. Okay, uh, normally uh, another dis disadvantage is that we use a simple, move, a simple movement. Uh, for example, flexion and extension or abduction and abduction. But if we are going to make a difficult movement similar to three, four, five uh, joints, uh, uh, the movement is usually that you lose the measurement that you want to take. Okay, well, with these questions, uh, we are going to use three types of kinematic jump, kinematic gonio, and uh, goniometer advance. The um, all are free for um, Android and for uh, EOT system. You can download the free apps. What is important? What do you need uh, to know uh, with our apps? Um, with kinematic jump, we are going to find three different variables. The power that we get with the jump, the time of life, and the distance from the jump. Three samples variables that give you very important question about the injury that our patient has. But if we are going to use a kinematic gonio, we can evaluate easy movement or complex movement. The problem to evaluate both movement is where I have to put the phone when I want to take the measurements. For example, one question is very important. When we are going to take the data, we have to put the mobile like this in the same plane that the patient is working. Because if I want to take the movement in the shoulder and I put the movement here, um, here, like this, uh, is the angle, the angle that I take with the phone probably change the correct range of movement that have the patient. We have to put in the same plane and we have to put the center of the camera in the center of the joint that I want to take the measurement. If I respect two questions, the measurements are very accurate if we, if we compare this data with equipment from 3D analysis. And the coefficient of variation between both is less than 10%, it's, it's few, it's, it's good for the cheaper. Um, the other app that we are going to use is, is Goniometro Advance. Okay, we are going to find with this app, ROM, speed, and the power line that I'm going to speak about the last uh, uh, case that we have with the solver. Uh, you can download now if you want. Uh, it's very easy. You, got, you have to open App Store if you have uh, iPhone or Play Store if you use Android. And it's very important that you put Goniometro Advance. Goniometro Advance. If you put another word, you can find uh, another goniometros with the same brand, but it's different equipment, uh, different um, uh, device that, you, that use, for example, external device to get the data, okay? Um, if you put goniometro advance, you can download. Uh, what happened? Uh, it's possible that you try now, download the apps and you cannot find. Why? Because there are 9,000 different phones in the world, 9,000. Uh, all, the th uh, all the telephone, everybody, every phones don't have the same internal tools. And if your phone don't have 
don't, uh, doesn't have, um, for example, Heroscopio, you cannot download this app, okay? If your phone has the free equipment, you can download and you can begin to play with this equipment. We're playing. Yeah. It's fun. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. What we are going to see? We are going to see three, three features, ROM, system basic, system advanced, and you, are, uh, you have blocked the premium system because the one that they pay, okay? Uh, I think so that now it's not necessary that you download this because this part is only, only to work with different patients. Uh, I prefer or I like use the screen pan to take the measurement and I can send by email to record the evolution with the patient. It's a lot of easy that connect the mobile with the PC, with the Wi-Fi. Uh, I find uh, a little difficult this question, okay? Well, um, when I connect basic or I connect advanced, we are going to see the same uh, graphic chart. Okay, but when I put begin and end the movement with the basic, we only, we are going to see the degrees in the maximum degrees in the three planes. But when we are going to use the advanced, we can find the range of movement in the three movement during all the time, and we can take the speed in the different movement. Okay, I think so that uh, advanced equipment is a good to take range of movement and the other uh, variable is very nice to speak about the proposition with the patient because the speed tell us what is the correct proposition that have the patient because I can have the same range of movement but if my shoulder left I move very fast but the other I move very slowly, I can speak or I can talk that you have an injury in the proprioception, the right shoulder, okay? Well, the other equipment that you can download is kinematic jab, a kinematic gonio. We are going to speak uh, after uh, different uh, forms to take a measurement. Uh, it's possible uh, that you cannot download with the Android system because uh, they have changed uh, the database in, in, in Spain, okay, it's, it's, it's possible. But you can try in the next week probably uh, download without problem, okay? Well, uh, we are going to find with the both equipment good var uh, variables that we are going to use in our uh, patient, in the three cases that we have, okay? Well, with three uh, apps, we are going to take variables with three cases that tell us if we can um, continue work with our patient or we can uh, change the treatment with our patient. The first example is Pedro, is a patient who had a car accident three weeks ago. He continues to have pain in his neck uh, even after physiotherapy treatment. Uh, we need to evaluate the patient's neck to know which treatment we are going to use, know if the treatment will be effective with the first session, with the first week or in the next weeks. Uh, or know when we'll have to finish the treatment because my patient is correct or have a good proposition or have a good range of movement. The target that we are going to use is very simple but very, very important. Is what ROM are you going to use in the treatment? What is Pedro's proposition? Uh, he has a good or bad evaluation. What is the difference movement we you use in the treatment, depend the range of movement that have the patient. I have to do an, a one technique, a manual therapy or another manual therapy. Or if there are differences between the passive movement 
or in the active movement, we have to decide, I have, I have to um, think what is the better treatment in this case, okay? Uh, are we sure that the training is effective? We are going to take easy measurement with our phone to know this question. And we are going to use two apps, the uh, Goniometer Advance and Kinematic Lab, okay? What is the variables that we are going to use? ROM, coefficient of variation, and speed, okay? Remember what is coefficient of variation? It's the difference between free movement. Uh, is the average divided from the, uh, sorry, is the uh, standard deviation divided uh, between the um, average, okay? And if we multiply for 10, uh, for 100, we get the coefficient of variation. That is a day that gives you the uh, percentage, the difference between the three movement, okay? Well, we are going to use the goniometer advance. The first that we are going to use with our patient is sit down in a chair and block the shoulder to the movement is correct and when I make the rotation, I now move my shoulder and take all the spine uh, movement, okay? The second is open, uh, open the uh, uh, app. We select advance and begin the movement and we have to put the mobile in the head. This is the bad question because if you have these tools, this device, we are going to put this here, that is Raquel, is the woman, half in the head, okay? It's the same that we can use with our phone or with our device, um, but in this case, it's more easy, and if, uh, if the equipment go to the, f um, if, if the equipment fall, we don't break our phone, okay? Well, when we sit down in the chair, I'm going to ask the three movement, and we can find the three different rates of movement. Flexion and extension, uh, rotation, right and left, and left, and lateral side in rate of movement. You can see this, rate of movement. But in the same uh, screen push speed, we can find the speed with the same movement. It's very easy to know that if we make a chair um, graphic with the data, we can know what is the correct movement that the patient has. Flexion extension, lateral right, lateral left, rotation right, rotation left. And the speed that the patient has with these variables, it's very easy to know if the patient is good or is not good. In this case, we have very clear that the patient have a big important problem in the left side and the rotation left too, okay? Now, what going to do with this data? We are going to take the patient, we are going to make the treatment and when we finish the treatment, we can repeat the same test. And we can find if the difference within the first and the second is good or is not good. Uh, we can ask to the patient if he, ha uh, he has, or he has uh, pain or not pain. Uh, because you can find the value similar and only there are a question that is a pain, but the range of movement is correct the speed is correct and everything is correct. Uh, we have to think that probably there are another problem that is possible that other uh, healthy therapy have to treat, okay? Well, this is the first, but with the second uh, apps, we can use uh, um, kinematic gonio and it's easy to use because we are going to make the picture in the different planes and we are going to take the range of movement, the different values. And we can use the same data 
than the other apps. It's very easy to use. This is active movement, but if I put the patient in the bed, in the bed of treatment, and I make the different treatment, front and plane, lateral plane, or axial plane, we can get the different rates of movement with a easy picture, okay? And we can make the same with passive movement to take the picture, okay? Perfect. Second case, patient that have a problem because he break um, the knee, because he was uh, skiing, and now have uh, instability. Well, uh, the patient uh, have treatment in physiotherapy, and we think that the patient have to begin to run or begin to jump, because I think so that could be a good strength in different movement, the extension and flexion in the knee. Okay? What is the, what do we need to know before to can or jump? that the patient have a similar balance between the two legs. Because if I want to begin to run with one leg uh, very weak, it's probably that the other leg have to work a lot. And in the two or three weeks, the patient have a problem in the healthy legs. Now we are going to make two apps again. We are going to repeat with kinematic lab but now we are going to use jump kinematic. It's another apps that give us the power that we are going to get with the jumping activity. Uh, with um, <coughs> a kinematic gonio, it's very easy. We are going to take a picture in the frontal plane and we are going to know if the knee, ankle, hips, is similar between both. It's good because it's an easy form to evaluate objective or subjective evaluation with eyes, okay? Uh, it's very easy. Uh, when you have to, uh, to use this app, remember that you have to take this button and move where you want to begin the join, okay? I have to move here, put the, uh, begin the join, next, another, next, another, and you can find the different rates of movement from the joint. But we are going to use the jump. The jump, the jump app is a app that we are going to use with a video that I, ha I can take with my phone or I can take with another um, camera record because you can send the video, for example, uh, if you don't uh, have a, uh, a possibility to take a measure uh, with your patient and your uh, staff, you can tell to the patient that have uh, this uh, video in other, uh, in other place, okay? Or in the camp or in the uh, area that the patient are going to make the exercise. Well, what is the variable that we can find with the patient? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. The first that we have to do is put the height and the weight that the patient has, because it's a very important data, because it's the data that use the equipment to know how many times are you flying in the picture. If you put bad, uh, the um, uh, wrong uh, weight, the data is not correct, okay? It's very, very important that you put the, the, head, the, the toll and the weight. You have to mark the uh, take off and you have to mark the landing moment in the jump. And with two easy steps, we can find all the, this data. The power jump, the time flying, the jump size, the jump speed. We are going to make three tests with the both feet, with the right feet, and with the left feet. And we are going to compare the different values. This patient, do you think that can begin to run? The landing moment is on your, on your toes on the floor or your feet? 
the landing moment is when the foot touch the flow. And the landing, the landing is this moment, and the takeoff is the moment that you don't have contact with this, uh, with this, uh, with the, with the um, wall. Okay. Uh, if you have a good camera, uh, the slow motion, you can record this video and use this slow motion video to take the measurement with the patient because it's more easy that you find exactly the moment that take off and landing with the patient, okay? Then, with this valor, I think so. My opinion, it's only my opinion that the patient is probably they cannot run or cannot jump because have a very high difference between the ref and the left um, leg. It's probably that the patient need continuing work with the left leg during more time until you find the difference, no more 80% between two legs. That is the normal value to begin to run or to begin to jump with the patient without risk of injury again. In the bad leg, but in the leg, in the good leg again, okay? Well, uh, we are going to speak very fast. The last uh, case, that is a patient that have a problem in the shoulder. Um, it's similar, he was, uh, he fall, he fell um, while skiing and dislocated his shoulder and um, he was uh, immobilized uh, during the first three weeks, and he was beginning to make isometric exercise. But now we want to use, we want to treatment with isotonic movement. What is the question? You, uh, you know yet uh, what room are you going to do with the treatment? And if we need to uh, evaluate this uh, variable, we can use the goniometer, uh, kinematic goniometer. Uh, what is the difference movement that we use in the treatment? We know that we have three different movement, abduction and abduction, rotation, and flexion and extension, okay? But we have a problem. How much weight do you use? Because it's the third week, uh, he did isometric movement, but how much weight do you use? We, we need something to know what is the correct weight that we are going to use with our, our, patient, our patient. But how many repetitions do you make with the patient? 10, three, six. How many sets? Two, one, until patient tell us they have pain. Um, are you sure that your training is effective? And uh, when do you change the next weight? Very easy. Uh, a short remind about the, this question. Uh, do you know this graphic? Is the relationship between the velocity, speed, between torque, weight, or force? When I have to do a isotonic movement with the speed, the speed is zero, you find the maximum strength that you can do. For example, if I want to move this table, I cannot move, my speed is zero, but I make the maximum strength. But if I want to move this weight that is very light, I'm going to make a high speed because the weight is very short, okay? This is the more important question that we need to know when we are going to use uh, this app to find the correlated weight with our patient. Because if we have these lines, probably my patient is weak and cannot do correlated the exercise. But if I only see this graphic, is correct? It's very difficult to know because it's probably that it's good or the patient is half these values. What, what have to do? We have to find the power. 
the multiply between speed and force or, tor or torque is the power. That is the relationship between force and speed. Until now, we are using we are using a bit, um, uh, we are using the wave to improve the uh, training with our patient. But to take the f strength with a patient, we need a dynamometer, and uh, it's very expensive. We are going to change, and we are going to begin to think in the speed as a simple valor to take the different uh, uh, variables. How we are going to do this? We are going to make a simple test where we are going to begin different wave in a simple movement with the mobile. We are going to put the mobile in the, in the arm. We are going to take um, a wave or without weight, the first movement, zero, one kilos, two kilos, three kilos, and we are going to make three movement. We take the average and we find the speed with the weight. And we are going to make the first graphic. Remember, relationship between speed and force. And this is the patient graphic. It's nice. But we are going to find the power curve that we are going to get multiply the kilos with the speed in abduction and in abduction. We can find abduction and in abduction. Easy, because this graphic, this curve, is a power from my patient. And we can find two points where we are going to change the curve, begin to uh, maintain and begin to low. What means this? This date is the resistance value, and this line is the moment that the patient begins to lose the power correlated in the activity. We can say that if I work with three kilograms, we are working endurance. But if we work with eight kilograms, we are going to work with strength. It's very good because if you remember the first graphic, what do you want to improve with my patient? Resistance or maximal strength? Normally, with the patient that begin to work, is work with strength. And when you get, or you get up the strength with our patient, we can begin to work the endurance with different weight. But, in this case, we have, sorry, we have select what is the weight that the therapist think that is better for our, for our patient, or three or eight. It's very easy, taking the, dat, the data from the test, the first test. Wait, but now we need to know how many repetitions can the patient do? And how many sets? We are going to take the weight, for example, for endurance. And now we are going to take the, maxim, the, the movement with the patient until the patient begin to slow the movement. Because I think so that is the best movement and when the patient drop below 80 percent, then we can assume that their muscles are tired or they may even be exhausted or dry. It's the moment that we have to stop because the patient begin to try, begin to um, fatigue all the muscle. Then we have one set with seven repetitions. Um, this is the first set. Now we are going to rest during a short time that we get from the up, the double from the time that we are using to take this value, and repeat again 
the same, the same test. What happened? Your muscle probably is fatigued and need a few number of repetition to find this value. That is the limit that you have to take to stop the movement. Because the patient could repeat another movement, but it's probably that if the patient continue working with this weight with slow movement, probably break or have an injury because he is working uh, very outside from the uh, quarterly movement. With this easy test, we can find one test with six repetition, second test with four repetition, and we don't have to do another movement to abduction and abduction. We are going to do this test with flexion and extension and rotation external and rotation external, internal. And we can work very accurate with the data ca that have our patient. If, uh, if I want to compare the evolution, I, I can make the same test in the healthy shoulder, and then we know when you have to uh, training with your muscle from different joint. For example, if my patient, if my patient uh, in flexion and station make 10 repetition and the flexion only have six, I have to work until take 10 repetition. But in the moment that the patient get 10 repetitions similar as the healthy shoulder, you have to stop and continue to work with other um, movement. Because if you continue to work with this movement, it's probably that the strength change in the shoulder and the movement is different between the both shoulder. Okay? Uh, when do you perform new tests? Uh, Normally, I think so that when finish, when pass six, seven, uh, or 10 days, we have to repeat the same test. Uh, I think two weeks to repeat the test. Uh, if I have more power, it's great, because you have to change the weight, you have to change the number of repetition, and uh, your patient is growing correctly in the treatment. If the patient have the same power, it's probably that uh, you have to continue the same weight during another two weeks more. But if the patient have less power, you have to think that you have a problem. Because it's probably that your patient is not uh, growing correctly the treatment or is not working correctly during the, the, the treatment. Uh, three simple example, uh, uh, patients to take the measurement with the patient uh, to take a simple as uh, apps to get these uh, values or this measurement. I hope that you like. So we have time for some questions. I'm just going to get you to speak into the microphone. Thank you for your presentation, Esther. Very interesting. I have two questions. One, if, if you can extract that data from the app to your computer. And the second one, if, if you can store it, and if you can store it as a whole, or if you can store as an individual patient to do the follow-up. Yeah. Uh, to, to pass the data uh, between the apps and the mobile, uh, with just with, uh, sorry the the mobile laptop mm -hmm. um, depend depend from the apps in the goniometro app uh, advanced um, in, in this you have to buy this. Okay, if you buy this, you can connect easy the both equipment, mobile and laptop, okay? Uh, but I think so that it's not necessary because if you take the screen band, it's a picture from the, the, the phone, 
you can send this data with an email or your phone, and you can put the screen in the history from your patient, okay? Uh, with this, it's not possible, because the app is the same. Uh, if you want to record this question, you have to take a picture and send for email, okay? Uh, with the other, uh, with the uh, jump, with the kinematic jump, uh, you have all the data inside the telephone, okay? But you cannot send and you cannot connect between. Um, to get this uh, app, you have to log in because uh, it's very important that your phone have um, uh, a control from the people that enter in the phone to take uh, date or data from the patients, okay? Uh, the other question? I also like, a, I don't know, like a label, this is patient number one or patient number yeah. two or something uh, like that? Yeah, in this case, you, you have patient one, patient two. Mm -hmm. Number of tests and the patient uh, in the kinematic jump. In the goniometro app, is the mobile, you can put the different patient with the number two. Okay? Mm -hmm. And the other question was what? No, you already answered okay. both of them. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so if I want to measure trunk rotation, um, typically now I would stand uh, over the person and get them to rotate, right? Yep. So that we're in the, in the correct plane. Um, how do you do that? Uh, I put the patient in the van, in the bed, yeah. uh, with a supino pos position, and I take the picture from from there. From, from there. Okay. okay, this is a. Or I could stand on the ladder. And or I, I can take the picture, in this yeah. in this place. But that's the way to do it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? So I wonder if you could uh, just explain a little bit about the project that we're going to work on together. Okay. Um, <coughs> we are going to use um, this slide uh, because uh, the project that we, are going, we want to do uh, here, um, we are going to take the measurement from the range of movement in different movement in the head. But we are going to take the range of movement and the speed that the patient can to do can do with the with the head. It's similar in gait gait analysis. When you want to evaluate the gait analysis with the patient, uh, you tell uh, the patient please walk uh, at your speed. Okay. Uh, if the patient speaks very fast, it's probably that have any injury. But if the patient speaks very slow, it's probably that the patient has another injuries or another problem. Uh, now, we don't have this value with the neck because only have um, any research that have the date of range of movement. But if I have a wish plus, I cannot compare this data with the speed because for us, for me, I think so that it's the excellent measurement to know if the patient has a good evaluation or bad ev evaluation. Our, our, our project try to find, I don't know what. Uh, um, uh, we are going to use, um, we want to know the difference movement and we want to compare with the different um, anthropometric values. For example, I have the uh, neck very long and I don't know if the people that have the neck very short have the same uh, speed when he or she move the neck. And we want to take the difference um, values from the length of the neck, the distance between the acromions and the weight, and the time that you have working over the laptop, over the phone, or over the TV, because we think that all the things can change the range of movement and the speed that you usually have in your neck. Uh, the idea is to compare this data between 
a patient from Canada, patient from Spain, from France, from USA, and Mexico. Uh, because we want to know if all are the same or we have any difference because we, li we live in different um, uh, countries with different costumes. And this is the research that I hope begin the next year. It's just a quick question. So when you're doing this, whether it's in a clinical application or in the research study that you're doing, are you asking people to do it as fast as they can, or are you asking them to do it at their typical normal pace? Uh, uh, with the research? In, in either case, I'm, I'm wondering if you're gonna use this app as a way of gauging progress or how to um, change your intervention plan. What would be your instruction or what would you be telling people to do? Okay, when, when uh, I'm going to speak uh, in the first moment about the research, uh, in the second from the clinical case. Um, uh, when we want to take the measurement in the research, we are going to told the patient that he have to, day, he have to do the movement in comfortable action. It's comfortable movement, that not so fast and not so slowly. Uh, the patient usually asks, uh, but I have to do the movement very fast? No, no, comfortable. And the patient have to move the neck with different movement. Uh, we are going to take five movement with the neck because we are going to lose the first and the last. Mm -hmm. And we are going to take the m m uh, average in the center because it's probably, the, the usually happens, is the first is very fast and you find the coefficient of variation good with the free movement, okay? In the patient, uh, when you are treatment a patient, you have, to s you have to think what you want to find with your patient, for example. If the patient is a, a very short time from the injury, you have to say range of movement without pain, okay? And you can look for the range of movement and the speed that the patient has without pain. Uh, when the patient grow with the treatment and uh, he go better, it's probably that you can say that the speed is different. And if it's a patient, for example, for a sport activity, you can try to make the movement with high speed. Uh, for example, if you work with uh, basketball players, uh, I, when we are finish the treatment, I need that the patient make the maximum speed that the patient can do. Because I need uh, to know if the patient have any problem when move very fast the neck, okay? Depend, uh, in this case, depend that what you want to know from your patient. It's similar that we are going to take me the measurement with passive movement. It's very good because you can find the point where you have a block and you can use the apps to know if the block go up or continue in the same position. Okay? Thank you. Uh, in relationship with that, um, I think that you are really uh, good by taking like uh, removing first and last trial, uh, trying to find average, etc. But I uh, I have a question about if you are taking some precaution to avoid some errors related to the power. Uh, by that I mean uh, power when you make the calculation is related to the acceleration, not the speed. So if as a patient I'm doing uh, very random uh, movements, I would uh, add a lot of variation to the acceleration with which would uh, alter the values of the power. So have you had some pre-testing uh, pre uh, phase where you have kind of a robot who does that, do that in a regular acceleration, something like that, just to make sure that the power values are um, close to the reality of the movements and not just uh, coming from errors related to the, GP, to the uh, iPhone? I, sorry, but I need that you repeat the question because I don't know exactly what you ask. Okay, sorry. Uh, I mean, when you when we measure the power, uh, it's related to the acceleration, right? So but, yeah, I, uh, short. 
Uh, you can find the power with the acceleration. Yes. Uh, you can find the power when you take the measurement from the speed. The speed is the derivative from the acceleration. Yes. Uh, if you use the speed, you can find the power uh, with, the, with the apps too. Yeah, exactly. So this is what I mean. So acceleration is the uh, source of problem <laughs> everywhere we try to do uh, wearable devices. So uh, have you just some precautions to make sure that the system is reliable in very controlled uh, conditions before trying that on neck movements? Just that. Just curious about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we made uh, the last year in 2016 to research uh, to compare the speed and rate of movement from the neck with the 3D analysis equipment. And we find the um, correlational between the both equipment is 0 0.97. It's very, very accurate. Um, this equipment have to, um, uh, in a laboratory of metrology uh, from Spain, they take the different measurement and they find that the difference with 1,200 evaluation is only one degree um, in the three planes. And I think so that is a good equipment for the price that the equipment has. Because if you want to buy this equipment, the cost is 1,000. If we compare this equipment with a 3D analysis, it's 100,000 uh, <laughs> equipment. Um, the 3D analysis has a average the only one degree, but this equipment has an average from three degrees. I think so. It's a good, a good value. Very good job. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just have a follow up to what um, Amin was saying, and that would be, is that once you have an idea of, you know, sort of differences in anthropomorphic measurements and that sort of thing, if there's short necks, long necks, that kind of stuff, um, having people, I mean, this is the, the criticism of gait analysis all the time, right? Having people walk at a self-selected speed does create some distortions in their power and, and um, accelerations. So once we kind of get this uh, under control and we, we have some faith that, that it is actually um, valid and reliable, then we could do something like create a metronomic kind of a movement so that we control for velocity and then that way too then the, the power will be more predictable. So it's the beginning, but yeah, yeah. excellent point, and that is the beginning of getting to know, to sort of verify these kinds of apps and, and having that clinical purpose so that then when you're extrapolating from what we know, we can take that into account and sort of say, okay, given that this is operational, then we have to take this into account. But like um, Nestor was saying, the cost associated with it, like no clinic is going to invest in a uh, motion analysis system, or and neither do we want to because it's so confusing and 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 difficult to extrapolate the data that it doesn't become clinically useful. So this would be like a quick app, a quick application in order to measure some pre and post kind of um, um, pre and post evaluation. So yeah, good idea. Anyone else? Thank you. Right, exactly. So you got the metronome. <laughs> so yeah. Despite my um, resistance on becoming more um, accessible and uh, you know with the apps and stuff, I did get a new phone. Everybody be happy. <laughs> anyway, so again, I would really want to thank you all for coming today and uh, for um, Nestor for your presentation. I think you've given us some food for thought and definitely sort of a way to, to move forward in the future. I want to extend this invitation now so that you can look at the College of Rehab Sciences website, find my name, Barbara Shea, and uh, my email address. Um, Nestor also has an email address here at the University of Manitoba. Yeah. It's, it's here? Well, we don't know yet. Uh, yeah. because so you can contact either myself or Nestor to um, arrange a visit and where we can, you know, sort of more brainstorm what kinds of things we want to look at with using these apps. And if you have other ideas, 
um, that you want to incorporate, that this is the time, because he's, he's with us now for another six weeks. And uh, so the more that we can get done on this you know, on-site visit, the better. And he's also said to me that he's very interested in having uh, exchanges happen. So if anyone wants to go to Madrid, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, so there is that, that possibility too. So keep that in mind. <laughs> and I think this is the beginning of a, a collaboration that, that is going to have a lot of success. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, you.